My biggest economic fear is revisiting the 1970s. All right, so a lot of people don't recognize how bad the 70s were. Um, a lot of people are too young to have li- I lived through. I was born in 1970. Now, we didn't have a vehicle, so I don't remember what gas rationing was because we had no car. But it's easy to look back on a picture and say, man, that sucked. But, man, imagine living through that, dude. And, like, if you had a tag that ended in an odd a number, then you could get it on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday or something like that. If you had a tag that ended in an even number, you can get it on the other days. You had to wait in line. It's crazy. And it was like a ration card like World War II when we were literally at war. I mean, there was the, uh, the OPEC and in response to Israel war and whatnot. But still, we weren't at war in terms of like it was World War II. We actually had ration cards. It wasn't like that. And yet we had rationing in the United States in my lifetime. And a lot of people look and say, oh, man, the 70s was freedom. You know, people smoked. You could go in the back of your mom's station wagon, all that stuff. I get that. But, man, it was for economically, it was a challenge. That's a fact. So I've been thinking about this a lot because I, I, this is a concern of mine. So a couple of things. Median sales price of homes in the United States. And what I've done, I just did in five-year increments going back to as far as the, the Fed data allow us, which is 1963. And so the median five-year increase in sales, the sale price of a median home, median means 50% have more, 50% as less, grew by 12.18% a year from 1972 to 1977. The median sales price grew by 12% a year. Then the next five years, it grew by 72 Now, that was from 1977 to 1982, and that's when we whipped inflation now, right? No. The next five years under Reagan from 82 to 87, it grew by 8.63% a year, the median sales price. All right. Now we fast forward, go to 3, 3.62, 5.11, 5.66. Negative in 20, uh, 20, 2008 to 2012. Look, the last five years from 2022 to 19, uh, 2017 to 2022, it grew by 7.11%. And then it fell 7% in 2002. But that's the most has grown in any five-year time frame since the Reagan years. And that's almost as much as the 1982 time frame. This is the concern I have right there. The median sales price growing a la 1972 to 1977. And I don't think we're anywhere out of the woods yet because they're not building a supply. All right, so then I started saying, okay, let's take a look. We're going to look at our total unemployment versus total, comp, uh, total amount of people out there. All right, so you can see this chart right here. This is the, uh, the amount of people in the United States. So we had 200 million when your old buddy, oh, that's before I was born, that's in 1960. And of those two, 200 million people, we had, in this number right here, uh, about 4 million were unemployed. But watch what happens in 1982. We had 10 million unemployed. And we had a population of 234 million people. And if you look at that, I mean, look at that, dude. And so if you look at it percentage-wise, and I'm going to show you here, in 1970, right there, 2.2% of the population was unemployed. That's the total population, 2%. Go to 19, right there, 77, 3%. That's an increase in 50% of the people who were unemployed. Then you go to 1982, and it's 4.6% of the people were unemployed. That's a quad, uh, not quadrupling, a doubling of what it was just 15 years, no, 12 years previous to that. Then you can see it starts going down, it starts going down. Here in 2010, 9, 10, 11, it was a 4% again. And lately it hasn't been that much. This is our saving grace right now about the amount of people unemployed relative to the population as a whole. The problem that I have with those numbers, though, is that are they counting part-time people in there? And I think they are. And that's a big concern in terms of total population. I read somewhere the, uh, the, the employment numbers are good, but you take away part-time employees is not good at all. And I don't know if that's the same way they looked at it in the past. I don't know. But either way, there, you can find work. That's just a fact today. That's a fact. You can find work. It might not be what your stupid college degree said. It might not be what you like. But there is jobs you can find. That, I don't think anyone would d- dispute that. The question is, is it a part-time job or a, a lower-end job? I, I just don't know. But right now, we're looking pretty. Only 1.81% of the population is unemployed, whereas just 10 years ago, 4.4% of the population was unemployed. All right, so then I started saying, okay, so because a couple of things here. We have a, a growth rate of the median sales price on the home that we, that we hadn't seen since the early 80s or the mid 80s and the 70s, all right? But now we have an unemployment rate that's way low compared to those times, all right? So if you go back to the early 80s, 
in the, in the 70s and early 80s, there's a mass amounts of unemployment, mass amounts. All the while, the median price of a home was growing by leaps and bounds. Stagflation, all right? Here we got growing of the median home price over the last five years, but we don't have mass unemployment. So that's, a, that's, that's interesting, but that's a lagging indicator. We're looking in the past. So then I said, what, let's look at this here. All right, so there's a lot of data going on here. This is disposable personal income right here in this line right here. And uh, that's going to be per household. Disposable personal income per household. What disposable income is, is simply you take your gross income, subtract your taxes, and that gives your disposable income. And just again, just Fred data. So we're looking at disposable income. I know it's not charted or anything. I'll explain it here in just a second. Go back to 1963. We're looking at the median home price in 1963. And this is annualized, by the way. So we say our disposable income relative to the median home price in 1963 was uh, basically 13%. So our median home price, uh, our disposable income represented 13% of our median home price. Does that make sense? So if you have disposable income of $10,000 and you have a median home price of $100,000, that's 10%. Your disposable income runs, uh, is 10%, effectively 10% of the price of the median home. And again, the median home, half are the more expensive, half are less expensive. But these are disposable income per capita and the median home price. So now we look here. Oh, look, in the 1973, disposable income versus median home price is getting higher. Isn't that interesting? All right. So what do you want? I mean, you want a higher disposable income relative to median home price. So if we have a uh, if we have a hundred thousand dollar house, we got ten thousand dollar disposable income. That's a 10 percent. If we have a $100,000 house and a $15,000 disposable income, that's 15%. That's a positive thing in terms of disposal income. Disposal income is your income after taxes. So that's a good thing right there, right? But there's a part two of this we'll share in just a second. And so you can see keep coming down here. You see 1982, disposal income relative to median home price is now 15%, which again is which sounds good. You're like, oh yeah, we're making more money relative to median home price. That's a good thing. It could be. Keep going down here, and we're going to go down to where we are now. Our disposable income as of 2023 relative to median home price is 14%. So significantly higher than it was in the 1960s. So we have low unemployment, and we have disposable income relative to median home price. That's, that's quite good relative to historical numbers. And I think, so that, there's a lot to be happy for. That's why I'm just trying to show you the 1970s were bad. But my concern is, again, these are looking behind, lagging indicators. They're looking behind. So then we want to look, though, but it's more than this. Because just because right here, our, in 1971, our disposal income to median home price was the highest it's ever been at 50, basically 16%. Disposal income relative to median home price. The facts are our mortgage interest rates are 7.34%. So if we're buying a house, remember, buying a house, about two-thirds of the population are homeowners. And people buying and selling houses has a huge impact on, I'm not going to say economic growth, not necessarily GDP, but on your ability to downsize, your ability to upsize, your ability to, to freaking, you know, lay your foundation in the neighborhood. It's incredibly important in America to be able to buy and sell a home. So while the disposal income to median home prices, the highest has ever been, check this out. Our, dispose, our payment versus disposal income here because interest rates are 7.34 with 4.4%. All right, this is monthly payment. Monthly payment relative to disposable income. So our monthly payment, if we were to buy that median home price, I know there's a lot of numbers, just hang tight. We bought a house for $25,000. We amortize it over three, 30 years at a 7.54% mortgage interest rate. Our monthly payment is 177 bucks. $177 divided by $4,002, which is our disposal income. 4% of our disposal income is being used on a monthly basis. All right. I mean, 4% of our annualized disposal income is being used to cover our mortgage payment. Now, we could easily take this to times 12 to see what it is, but I just want to show you because I just want to keep it simple. So every mortgage payment is 4% of our annual uh, disposal income. And watch what happens. By 1980, it's up to 7% because the interest rates are 13.74. Even though our disposal income relative to, relative to um, median house is still high, almost 14%. The facts are, it's costing us more and more 
of our disposable income to service our debt. And that's if we took a mortgage out here at 13.74. Well, the people who are buying your house are the people who are going to be taking that mortgage out. Does that not make sense? So if you're trying to sell your house or buy your house, you're dealing with it not in these mortgage interest rates, you know, back in the 60s, you're dealing with the mortgage rates in the, in the current scenario, which is 13.74. So while disposable income relative to median house is looking good, the amount of money it costs to service the debt relative to our disposable income is at 7%. Watch what happens here in 1982. Mortgage interest rates are 16%, 30-year mortgage rates. Our disposable income relative to our, our monthly payment relative to disposable income is almost 10%. Almost 10% of our, of our disposable income is going to our monthly mortgage payments. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket science. I'm paying 966 bucks a month in monthly payments, and my disposable income is only $10,485. I don't have any money left over. All my disposable income is going to mortgages. And yet the median home price, as we go back here, was still going through the roof. The median home price was going 12, was going 7.2 and 8% per year in those years. And yet disposable income relative to mortgage, relative to your median uh, home, even while the median home price was going up freaking doubling every eight years or so, you're, you're, if you, if this was you right here, a hundred percent of your income would be your disposable income would be allocated to paying your mortgage. Isn't that crazy? So then we go down here. We're back to 3.9% in 2023. So even though the median house is now 425 in 2023, the disposable income is at 60,000 bucks. So that's great. Our median house uh, relative to disposable income is 14%. So 14% of our income. Uh, relative to the median home price, which is a pretty good place to be relative to going back historically, 13%, 12% in the 60s. And here, even with interest rates of being at 6.81, our disposable income relative to our, I mean, our monthly payment relative to our disposable income is at less than 4%, even though the median price on the homes is going up. That's a good thing. But I don't know if this is going to be lasting. I don't know. That's what I'm concerned about. So think about it. There's not enough quantity for homes, which makes the median home price going to keep going up because there's just not enough supply. There just is not. Is our disposable income going to keep going up? I don't know, man. I mean, USA just laid off a bunch of people. I mean, I don't know. Now, the saving grace, of course, is the unemployment numbers. But again... <laughs> Uh, this was an unemployment, unemployment right here, 1.81. But how much of that is real jobs? I don't know how much of that. I mean, look, I talk to people all the time who are, you know, pretty solid employees are getting laid off because they're shipping their jobs to India and whatnot all the time. You can go get a part time. I grant you there is work to be had where you can make enough money to pay the bill. I grant you. But that's not what we're expecting you know we don't expect as a middle-aged man to get laid off and say well you can go find a job you know freaking digging ditch or something like that you're like yeah, i know i can do that you know i make 20 bucks an hour but i'm used to not having to do that i'm used to working and making eighty thousand a year now you're going to say i can make thirty five thousand a year even though the unemployment number sorry about the strobe light there just the light went out we got to got to change it so this is my concern you have a median home price going up, which stuns me. I, 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 I thought by now the, the prices would get more normalized. And then you have a disposal income that Joe Biden's going to say, look, our disposal income, our median home price is up, but our disposal income is up even more, which means we have a better percentage of disposal income relative to the median home price, which is true. And then you can say our unemployment numbers are low. I keep doing that. Our unemployment numbers are low, which they are. And then you can sit there and say, the growth of the median home price is going up and starting to level off because 2023. I, I don't know that to continue, though, because the supply of homes isn't there. Is it going to change anytime soon? I don't know. This is my biggest concern is going back to the 1970s. I tell you, man, that stagflation is a mofo. It's a mofo. And especially when you're just about to ready to retire or especially if you've got a bunch of debt. When there's no jobs, out. do you not remember what it's like? The seven, put it in the comments. Do you not remember trying to find, imagine if you graduated in 72, trying to find work in the 70s and 80s. Dude, it was tough, man. You didn't job hop like we do now. You didn't go in there and say, my pronouns are this. You said, I'll, you freak, I'll do whatever you want me to do. 
know what I'm saying? I will clean the dishes. I'll freaking, you tell me what you want me to do. I will do it just to have a job. It's a completely different ball game now. And I'm not sure it's going to last. Anyway, I just, I cannot stress enough. The people who had debt, even during the Great Depression, they're the ones who got skunked. The people who didn't have debt did not. They just did not. I talked about it in this book right here. Relax and Retire. Harry Myers, one of my economics professors, had written about uh, days on the family farm. Or, or literally, a, uh, a lady had written a diary of her life on the family farm in Rockford, Illinois. And she was, you know, no one knew about the Depression unless you had debt. I, anyway, the best way to deal with this is to not have debt. And I'm, look, I'm working. I got debt. I'm still working on it. Yes, for all the trolls, I do have debt. Oh, my God, what kind of financial advisor is he with debt? And I think about it all the time. Anyway. Love your thoughts. If you were around in the 70s and working, starting your career, I'd love to hear what your thoughts were. Because, man, helicopter. Black, black helicopters overhead. They're coming to get us. Black ops coming to get us. They finally said, Scanlon, we've had enough of your kind. All right. Love your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe. God bless. We'll see you.